Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we're going to discuss about lateral movements moving from devices to devices within an enterprise network. As an understood, within an enterprise network, there are thousands of machines that are replicated with the same software version, with the same hot patches or hot fixes, and with the same Windows operating system or different operating system, whether it's Linux systems in the servers, or whether there are different kind of services configuration or administrator password, user passwords. So these are the way that we can actually move from one device, compromising one device to multiple devices, escalating privileges as we move from sub-networks to sub-networks. And the whole idea today is how can we actually enumerate or gain as much information as we possibly can that can help us launch the next attack into the into the next network or launch the attack into the next device. So this is a really important information for you to actually gather first. And we're going to demonstrate how we can actually do that. So let's get started. So what we have over here is a Windows 7 virtual machine running on the foreground. And on the background, I have Color Linux running. So for Color Linux case, we are actually going to download a an item from ExploitDB that actually allow us to have connection into the environment. So this exploit is actually MS12037 that actually take advantage of the Internet Explorer 8 fixed column span ID. So what we're going to try to do is to conduct a so-called client-side attack. And what, what you got to do is you actually got to download a, a file from ExploitDB. So over here, I'm going to click ls-l and we actually have a exploit.html running. So I can actually do a hit exploit.html and we could see the information in regards to this exploit. So it's a CVE, Common Vulnerability Exposure 2012, 1876. So we have already downloaded this and actually host it on our service Aperture 2. So when we look at st status of service Aperture 2, we see that it is running. So you just have to send a link over to a, say, Windows 7 machine that is running on Internet Explorer. You'll be able to launch a force the virtual machine to actually open up a port 4444 so that you can actually connect over to it using Netcat. So all I got to do is enter 192.168.1.19, which is the call Linux machine running on the web application server of Aperture, followed by slash exploit.html. So when I enter this, this would actually force an opening onto the virtual machine on this Windows 7. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm actually going to do an nmap-st followed by 192.168.1.19. So depending on what is the IP address of this machine. So for example, if I were to go to command, for example, and I type IP config. So the IP config is going to see what is the address of this IP address of this Windows 7 machine. So I'm going to enter 27. So this could actually help us see what are the open ports running on 192.168.1.27. So to verify internally, we could also see what are some of the information running on Windows 7. So we can enter, say, for example, netstat-an followed by fine. So we are looking for the port 4444 and we see if it's running at all. So of course, from this information, we see that it is not running. So what we, what we have to verify is that if the information is not running at all, then how can we actually be able to, to exploit the, the content in this environment? So we could actually see what are the resulting information that causes the crash. So we could close the program or check online for solution and close the program. So when we look over again, we see that the port 4444 is actually not yet open. So I can actually do a close the program and it will say that the tab has been recovered. And then of course we can look at the net stat again. So of course we see that there is no connection available onto the information here. Of course, we can scan the machine again, hoping that we are able to see the, the port open up. So we see over here, we have TCP KRB524 open up. And what we can do is we can actually enter netcat followed by 192.168.1.27 followed by 4444. So this actually gives us direct access into the machine. So over here, I can enter DIR and I could actually see all the information available onto the Windows 7 machine. So the Windows 7 machine actually has a port 4444 open up. As you can see, there's an establishment from 192.168.1.19 over into 2.7. So of course, the whole step for today's tutorial and for you to learn is actually what can we do? The question is, what can we do to further attack or to enhance the attack in the environment? So we need number one call the system information. So this is actually to help us see what are the system information within the environment. Is there any certain OS that we can actually look at? What is the host name? What are the devices information? 
So over here, what's really important is the workgroup domain that we are in, what is the logon server that we are into, and what are some of the hotfixes that has been installed, in fact. So this could actually help us know how upgraded or dedicated this device is. And in an enterprise environment, there are thousands of machines with the same upgrade patches in the environment. So if we're able to hack into one of these machines using a known vulnerability that is dedicated specific to this machine, then chances are we can also authenticate ourselves unauthorized authentication into the rest of the 1000 machines. So that's a great way for us to gain more information about this, this device. And from here, we can actually do lateral movements into other environment. So we can also enter host name. So this would actually let us know what our host name within this particular within this particular machine. We can also do a net user. So this will allow us to see what are all the users within the environment. So over here, we can see we have an administrator, we have a guest, and we have a user ID within this computer. So if you're in an enterprise network, chances are we're gonna see hundreds of user accounts that we can actually save into a word list that help us hijack through brute force attacks. And of course, moving forward, we also need to know what's the IP configuration of this particular machine. Because if there are multiple sub-networks in the environment, chances are we need to know what is the IP range, what is the sub-network domain that we are working on so that we can further escalate and move to other nodes and devices and have multiple controls within the enterprise network. So this is imperative to us and what we can do. And of course, we also can see what are the route print. So route print can actually help us detect if there are any intrusion prevention detection systems in the environment, whether there are any firewalls in the environment, how are packets being routed differently so that we could actually do embedded traffic, network traffic that could help us remain under covert, covertly doing under the radar attacks. So these are all really important for us in order to help us better understand what is the machine, what is the network, uh, fundamentals of the network, the configuration of the network. So ARP-A again also help us understand what is the address resolution protocol cache table for all available interfaces. So this actually allow us to think whether we can do ARP poisoning in the environment, whether who are who is the, the DNS server, where are we getting the DNS service information from as well. So what are dynamic, what are static information that we can work on, and what are some of the physical addresses in the environment that we could actually copy into our attack vectors. So these are really important and, and powerful ways for us to understand what we could do further once we attack a particular device. It doesn't end there because chances are we need escalator privileges. We need to move around the network to different devices and compromise as many systems as we can. So the next step, of course, is netstat ano So this help us see what are some of the ports open up? What are some of the communication devices interacting with this machine? And this would help us accelerate the whole process of knowing which devices are dead and which devices are alive in the environment so that we know which are the next target that we can move over into. So of course, at the same time, we also want to know what is the firewall, firewall status of this particular machine so we can do a NetSH firewall show stat. So this will help us see what is the firewall configuration. Is it enabled? Is it disabled? What are the remote admin mode available that we could actually try to break into? So there are many, many multiple ways for us to, to really look at what we could do in order to compromise the system further. So we also can take a look at one of some of the scheduled tasks in the environment. So we can do a query fo list and dash v. So this will help us see what are some of the items available? What are the services that are being started up immediately when the system actually runs? Can we replace those services with our persistent backdoor so that every time the user actually reboots the machine, we continue to have authorized access into the system and continue to have consistent access into the enterprise network? So these are really important questions for us to look at, to think about, and what else can we do to enable us to accelerate the process of attacks. So over here, we see that we have multiple activities running in the environment, and also we have SLS mail, SL mail. So these are, these are the kind of services that are known to be vulnerable in the environment, and we can cross-check against the exploit DB to find out more information about the services and how can we further exploit into escalator privileges. So these are really, really important ways for us to understand what else can we do in the environment. So let's start again. What are the services that are started by default when a machine was to boot up? So these are the kind of, kind of information that we really need in order to help us access the, the environment because chances are whatever is enabled in this particular device 
is enabled across the 1000 other Windows 7 machine in the enterprise network. We are really discussing on advanced attacks right now. So with advanced attacks, we need to do more homework. We need to enumerate more of the configuration files, more of the configuration settings, the network environment, what is a domain controller. So all these are imperative in order for us to gain further accesses into the network environment. So there you've seen it, lateral movements is one of the ways for us to actually help us control the information that we have within one device. So compromising one device, whether it's through phishing attacks, whether it's through malicious links or cross-site scripting, the moment you've accessed into the device, what can we do next? Can we further replicate the compromisation of, of more than a thousand machines or tens of thousands of machines in the environment? How can we actually move from device to service, service to devices, or from a device to a router? Understanding what is the network configuration? What's the best way to, to continue our COVID operation? So all these are great questions for us to keep exploring and trying to understand how we could become a more advanced attacker hacker and to really understand how the, the client actually structure the enterprise network using different network parameter defenses. So what else can we do to further escalate privileges in the environment and gain sensitive data, sensitive information. So today's tutorial I hope will be valuable to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you like what you have just watched, feel free to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.